today we are going to discuss some of the African American National Park units in honor of Black History Month. The United States began to establish a series of national parks in the late 1800s in an attempt to preserve America's natural beauty and later cultural spaces. The first national park was located in Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho, and is known as Yellowstone National Park. In 1906, Congress passed the Antiquities Act, which authorized the President of the United States to declare national monuments in order to act quickly to save natural or cultural sites. All it requires is the President to issue an executive order or other type presidential administrative order to create the park. Theodore Roosevelt would establish the first national monument, Devil's Tower, which is located near Gillette, Wyoming. The first cultural national park unit is the Mesa Verde National Park, which is located in the southwest corner of Colorado. It preserves multiple cliff dwellings and pueblos. Over ensuing years, additional cultural areas were designated primarily as national monuments, sites, memorials, or other historic parks. In 1916, Congress created the National Park Service to maintain and protect America's national parks and national monuments. The NPS comes under the authority of the Department of the Interior. Over the following decades, new types of national park units were established for particular historical, cultural, or physical landscapes. Among these were National Historic Sites, National Historic Parks, National Memorials, and others. Each type has a specific significance. In 2022, there are currently about 425 national park units. However, only about 25 of them focus primarily on African Americans. NPS units honoring African Americans generally fall within one of several categories. Sites honoring specific individuals, groups, or events, such as Maggie Walker, uh, the Civil Rights Movement, uh, sites that honor multiple historical events, or individuals involving African-American historical or cultural component, components, and sites not necessarily associated with African-Americans, but where an African-American individual or event of significance occurred. The first national monument to honor an African-American is the George Washington Carver National Monument located near Diamond, Missouri, in the southwest corner of Missouri. It was established in 1943. The unit honors the life of George Washington Carver, who was born as a slave and grew up here. Carver became a distinguished botanist and educator in the United States and taught at the Tuskegee Institute. He's also known for his development of uses for peanuts, sweet potatoes, and soybeans. The monument uh, is the Susan and Moses Carver Farm, where he was born. Uh, the wooden structure there is where the cabin where he was born was located. Uh, there is a statue of young George Washington Carver, who actually spent most of his life at Tuskegee Institute. The site is just the Moses and Susan Carver Farm, where you can walk around the fields and see the visitor center. The Booker T. Washington National Monument, located in Hardy, Virginia, was the second national monument created, and that was established in 1956. Born a slave, this monument preserves the birthplace and farm where Booker T. Washington spent his early years of his life. Uh, Washington made his mark as an educator and leading African-American spokesman for the African Americans in the United States during the late 1800s and early 1900s. He also helped organize and served as the first president of the Tuskegee Institute in Alabama. Uh, this particular national monument is a farm site. Uh, you'll see a lot of structures related to uh, the original farm. 
Uh, most of them, of course, are reconstructions. Washington, we know, would go on to Tuskegee, Alabama, where he was invited to establish what's known as the Tuskegee Institute. Uh, the Tuskegee Institute began in 1881, and in 1974, the historic part of the university became part of the National Park Service as a National Historic Park. Uh, Booker T. Washington served as the first president, hiring a number of African-American experts to teach, and these included uh, George Washington Carver, who taught at Tuskegee until he died there. The site is part of the Tuskegee University and is still in use today, so it is an active campus. Among the sites on the campus are the Washington's home, it was known as the Oaks, the campus cemetery where Carver and Washington and his family are buried and various classroom buildings and the Carver Museum. Nearby is the Tuskegee Airmen National Historic Site, which is located uh, near Tuskegee, Alabama. It was established in November of 1998 as a National Historic Site. The site honors the service of the Tuskegee Airmen, the all-African-American unit established to fight in World War II. The actual site contains several buildings, and including the two hangars, which are the main components of the site. Uh, hangar number one has a museum which shows some of the aircraft, offices, and classrooms that were associated with the Tuskegee Airmen. And then there's some surrounding structures and then some representational structures of iron bars to show some of the other uh, buildings. The Moton Airfield, which is right next to the site, was actually where the Tuskegee Airmen got their practice training. However, it is fenced off as it still remains an active airfield for the local community. By the way, anyone who served in the Tuskegee Airmen's units were classified as Tuskegee Airmen. They didn't have to be trained just at Tuskegee site. The Charles Young Buffalo Soldiers National Monument is located near Wilberforce, Ohio. It was established in 2013. The monument honors the life of Colonel Charles Young and the history of the Buffalo Soldiers. Colonel Young was the third African American to graduate from West Point, and until his death shortly after World War I, he was the highest ranking African American officer in the Army. Uh, Young, who purchased the home uh, close to Wilberforce University, uh, lived here when he taught at Wilberforce University the military science courses. Uh, his home served as a gathering place for African American leaders came to visit, including W.E.B. Du Bois. The site also discusses elements of the various national monuments for the Buffalo Soldiers, which would include the 9th and 10th Cavalry and the 24th and 25th Infantry. The house is the only part of the National Monument and is currently under reconstruction and renovations and all you can see today is the outer sections of the house. The Martin Luther King Jr. National Historic Park located in the Sweet Auburn section of Atlanta was originally established in October 1980 as a National Historic Site. In 2018 it was redesignated as a National Historic Park. Historic and other important structures associated with Martin Luther King Jr. include his birthplace, the house where he grew up in, the Ebenezer Baptist Church where both he and his father were preachers, the King Center and his grave site are also located within the historic park. Some structures not associated with Martin Luther King that are part of the park include a 1894 fire station and some shotgun style of houses, a typical southern style of architecture. The Frederick Douglass National Historic Site was the third site to 
honor an African American in the United States. It's located in the Anacostia region in Washington, D.C., and was established in September of 1962. Frederick Douglass had many achievements, including his participation in the abolitionist and other reform movements during the 1800s, his impact as a journalist, a great speaker, and civil rights activist and author. Remember, Frederick Douglass had been born a slave and had escaped to the north. This site includes two structures, Frederick Douglass's last home, which is known as Cedar Hill, and an outbuilding that Douglass referred to as the Growlery, where he could write, think, and read in privacy. Um, he had a good view of Washington, D.C., and he, along with other prominent African Americans, worked to convince President Abraham Lincoln to emancipate slaves and to expand the war to ending slavery besides just preserving the Union. Uh, you can do tours of the house, however, you have to do reservations with the visitor center. The Brown v. Board of Education National Historic Site is lo located in Topeka, Kansas and was established in October of 1992. This unit recognizes the role of the Brown v. Board case in the segregation of American public schools. This site consists solely of the school building that Linda Brown attended and the surrounding grounds. Um, the inside of the school has a museum where you can see elements of the efforts by African Americans to integrate education. It's important to understand that the Brown versus the Board of Education case was actually a series of five cases that dealt with discrimination and segregation within the K-12 system in the United States. That the United States Supreme Court would rule that the separate but equal policy established under the Plessy versus Ferguson case was no longer valid. The Little Rock Central High School National Historic Site is located in Little Rock and it was established in November of 1998 to honor the Little Rock Nine students who integrated the school. Uh, the school is an active school and visits to the school must be coordinated through the visitor center. Uh, you can walk the grounds outside and you can see some of the memorials to the students. Uh, the benches have some of the names of the students on them. For example, the one pictured in this presentation is the Carlotta Walls Linear bench. Uh, there are a number of benches for each of the students. Uh, there is also a small civil rights park located right across the street, uh, which is part of the National Historic Site. In addition, this school, the site also includes the Magnolia Gas Station, formerly part of the Standard Oil Corporation, which was forced to be broken up as part of the antitrust movement. The Martin Luther King Jr. National Memorial is located in Washington, D.C., near the mall area. The memorial was authorized in 1996 and dedicated in August 2011. It includes a statue of Martin Luther King Jr. and a series of panels with significant quotations from some of the speeches. Uh, it is fairly easily accessible uh, within the mall area and you can easily walk to it. One of the interesting sites within the park system is the Nicodemus National Historic Site located in Nicodemus, Kansas, and established as an NPS unit in October 1996. Founded in 1877, Nicodemus was one of a number of African-American towns established in the West by African-American homesteaders. Known as Exodusters, this was an attempt by African-Americans in some of the southern states to acquire land and to establish communities for themselves. Although in the long run the community didn't have a lot of success, it was the most successful of the 
black homestead units that were established. Um, currently, it consists of five buildings. The oldest is the St. Francis Hotel, which was the Fletcher Switzer House, constructed in 1881. It's down there on the bottom right-hand corner. And was constructed in 1881, as we noted. There are other buildings, which include uh, two churches, a school, and the township hall, which is built. Currently, Nicodemus, Kansas is a unincorporated site. Uh, it's a fairly long distance to drive out there, but it is located in the north central part of Kansas. The Maggie L. Walker National Historic Site is located in Richmond, Virginia, and became a National Historic Site in November of 1978. Uh, it honors Maggie L. Walker, who served as an educator, founder, and who served as the president of the first African-American bank that had a female as the bank president. Uh, she was active in philanthropy and worked to improve civil rights in the Richmond area. The house is located in Richmond's Jackson Ward. Uh, the house is a two-story house with multiple rooms with many of the furnishings that had actually been owned by the Walkers. Uh, one of the interesting elements of this house is it actually has a private elevator uh, designed to assist Maggie Walker as her health got poor during the latter part of her life. Uh, tours are available of the house. Once again, you need to visit the visitor center to reserve your time. The last monument we're going to look at is the Camp Nelson Heritage National Monument. It was established in 2018 and is located in Jessamine County, Kentucky. Uh, Camp Nelson had been established during World War, uh, sorry, during the Civil War, and it honors the site of one of the largest recruiting centers for the United States colored troops. These are sort of the precursors to the Buffalo Soldiers. It also served initially as an unofficial refugee center, center for slaves coming from outside of Kentucky. Remember, Kentucky was not subject to the Emancipation Proclamation, as it was not in rebellion. The camp later acquired official status for refugees, and the government officially constructed various buildings to serve as dorms, dining facilities, and schools. The monument was the site of a horrific event. The camp commandant uh, ordered the African-American refugees out of the camp. The uh, covered troops in training were allowed to stay, but their families were forced out. A, a large number of them died when the federal government overruled the commandant and they were allowed to come back. The grassy structure you see there on the bottom picture is one of the fortifications that were built around the camp to provide uh, protection from Confederate soldiers. So for those of you interested in acquiring additional sources, um, you can go to www.nps.gov, and that is the homepage for the National Park Service, and you can look up individual parks based on locations by map, by state, or name for additional information about the parks, or you can visit your local library.